this panel. I think I think you were one of the first proposers with this very interesting proposal, and so the first panel to be accepted. And uh, so it's the Alzheimer's project emanating out of Alfred University. Uh, I have actually before I introduce Rosemary, I need to let you know of a schedule change, and <clears throat> that is the. Festival's Rojas, uh, Maris Grospa, that has been canceled. His, his family is actually was in a car accident and uh, they're in hospital, so he can't, he can't make it. They're okay, but, uh, you know. So they are, are actually moving the archaeologists, the archaeological evidence uh, panel, over to the uh, community center. So, in, so that will start just right over at the community center right, right after this panel at 10.30. So there won't be any panels then after, you know, in here after, uh, <clears throat> after 10. So after uh, the Alzheimer's Glass and Iron Project will be Eden Jolly talking about From Tools to Turf. And no more panels here, so you can go over to the uh, community center to hear about the archaeologist, that, and that should be really interesting. And as well, happening at the same time is a studio tour of uh, Harry Yamsons, and he's a metalsmith over from here in Savala. I've looked at his work on the website, beautiful, beautiful work. So uh, you can either meet uh, the group over there, I think Laura is leading the group to visit the metalsmith after at the coffee and networking break, which is at 10.30, or you can go hear the archeologist. Does that all make sense? Okay, all right, so now we'll go ahead with this panel, and uh, it, it will <coughs> go over a little bit. Eden is next, so we can't go over too much, but uh, I think we can make it work. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Ro Rosemary Oakman was born and raised in New York in the Hudson River Valley, uh, but she has spent summers in London uh, while she was growing up. <clears throat> at that time, she attended courses at uh, St. Martin's College of Art and Design. Uh, she has earned her BFA from Alfred University with a minor in gerontology, the study of aging. And uh, in, at the 2013 National Conference on Cast Iron Art, she was the recipient of the Paige Wainwright Scholarship. Oakman has also interned as an emerging artist at Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham, Alabama. Additionally, uh, she's assist, assisted Coral Lambert with iron, a number of iron workshops and also the Northeaster, Nor'easter Conference in Buffalo, New York, <clears throat> and the International uh, Sculpture Symposium Iron Events in Miami that just happened this past fall. Uh, she loves metal casting and the elderly, and this was the genesis of the Alzheimer's Glass and Iron Project. It's a cross-generational, community-oriented art project uh, it benefits the Alzheimer's Association. She is actually the founder and director of this program, which is a landmark, and uh, she is has an upcoming fellowship at Salem Artworks in New York, and there she hopes to establish Alzheimer's Glass and Iron as a, not, a nonprofit organization. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I'm Rosemary. I think I know most of you in the room. But when I arrived at Alfred University, I started the Golden Years Club. And I really wanted there to be a cross-communication between college-age students and elderly within our community. So the club was mostly comprised of art students, and we would go out and we would do ceramic activities or painting activities every Sunday. And at this nursing home, there was a very large Alzheimer's and dementia unit. And that was the first time I was being exposed to Alzheimer's. So odd little things would happen. Um, I would ask someone their age during a 
potato painting session, and they were telling me they were 15 when they were obviously 80 plus. So leading into that, I started doing a lot of research and reaching out with the Alzheimer's Association. So the Golden Years Club started going to walks to end Alzheimer's. And then a group of us were certified in the Memories in the Making program by the Alzheimer's Association, which is a painting program that teaches you directly how to work and paint and have a wonderful painting session with elderly who have Alzheimer's and dementia. At that same time, I was getting very into metal casting. And that was such an amazing community of supportive people. And I knew that they would be willing to help me in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. And that is how Alzheimer's Iron formed. So a group of seven original girls were certified by the Alzheimer's Association in Memories in the Making. And then I taught those several girls how to cast iron based off one of the paintings made by the elderly. So we're taking the idea of fading memories and making them into eternal artworks. So in these painting sessions, we're working with iron oxide. And that is our translation. So we're taking iron from the painting and then putting it into the sculpture. So here's Haley, one of the original girls who learned to cast in this program with an elderly community member named Jo. And Jo had recently lost the ability to use her hand. So she was only really able to paint using dots. So if you can see in the corner, she actually has a home, which is a very common painting that the elderly make. And I think this is for several reasons. I think a lot of the elderly who work is, are really longing for their home and to be back home, as well as you're digressing backwards in your mind. And one of the first things we learned to draw is the house. So when Haley came to make her sculpture, she used that same dot formation. This is Haley's first iron sculpture. So that group continued on, and we worked throughout the semester creating more sculptures. This was my first sculpture made by Beverly Valentine, um, and she could only she loved drawing cards because of her last name. <laughs> <laughs> Later that summer, I was able to take the project down to Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham, and that's really when I started to understand that culture that goes with it, how much it is in the back of your mind. So when we're up at Alfred University, the Erie train line crashed. So a lot of elderly have flashbacks, and during the painting sessions get very nervous. They need to find a job. We don't have time to paint. And we're not there to produce paintings. We're really there to have this art therapy session. Mm -hmm. So we look through newspapers, and what kind of jobs would you be interested in? And we normally get them to a calm, relaxed level, and we can continue painting. But down at Sloss Furnaces, when you have a flashback, they were flashing back to the Civil Rights Movement. So that's very scary, and it's really this time capsule going on. Um, so that was just a very, very interesting <coughs> thing to see. And we have several artists down at Sloss who are producing sculptures to go along with the paintings, and those will be shown at the 2015 conference. And mm -hmm. Here's a painting from Birmingham. So you can see this iron oxide painting. Later on that summer, um, <coughs> Elise was able to join me at Salem Artworks, where we continued working on the project. So she will start from here. Elise, um, last summer, me and Rose spent some time at Salem Artworks doing the project in different nursing homes throughout Washington County, as well as Bennington, Vermont. Um, and during that time, we were really able to um, establish the project away from Alfred, um, other than like at Sloss. Um, and we had some really great experiences there. This, a lot of the time, you'll look at the paintings and people will think they're very um, elementary and like they don't um, mean much and they're just very abstract. Um, in the case of this painting, <clears throat> this woman grew up on the Baton Kilt River next to the um, powerhouse. And if you look here, this is the river and this is the powerhouse with the smokestacks coming out. Um, and we got that, you know, um, through the session and talking with her. And otherwise, you know, you may just think it's um, very abstract. And I think that's a really interesting thing about the project is that um, 
they have such deep meaning to a lot of things. And other things, you know, <coughs> maybe not as much. Um, and during one of our sessions in Bennington, Vermont, this painting was produced. And this was really a beautiful moment um, for me during the project because uh, this woman, she was very quiet, and she sat there and painted her painting. And initially, she had just done the um, the black part, and this is actually a painting of the Bennington Monument. Um, and she said, "Okay, I'm done with my painting," and gave it back to us. And then uh, she sat there for a while, and then she uh, asked for the painting back, and she added this uh, yellow to it, um, just with all these brush strokes. And she said, "I wanted to add the yellow sky." So. Um, that was just a really beautiful moment for me, and then I chose that painting because I was very moved by that moment. Mm -hmm. And this is the sculpture I created in response to that. Mm -hmm. um, my idea going into this piece was um, I wanted to make a piece that was very um, clean and very um, polished, and also take that yellow iron oxide and paint like she did, and this was my Bennington monument going down into the wood. Um, and so the idea was that there was this very pure vessel, and then when we poured the iron into it, the iron acted as Alzheimer's coming in and like wreaking havoc on that pure vessel and changing it. Um, so that was my my second Alzheimer's glass and iron piece, and it was a it was a very great experience just to see the difference from the piece from beginning to end. <coughs> And that's when, after that, we started Alzheimer's Glass and Iron. And Haley will tell you about that. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Haley Jelinek, and I'm also a recent graduate from Alfred. And um, so after we were doing the paintings with the iron oxides for quite some time, the elderly had started asking, like, I want some blues and greens. They wanted different colors to paint with. And so we thought, okay, we'll add watercolors into the mix. And um, then it was like, what medium are we gonna use with the watercolors? And glass seemed really well, because me and Elise are both glass artists. Um, and it's also a very team-based medium, so that went really well with the iron community. And um, so during this time, we um, got 40 Alfred students and Alfred State students certified by the um, members in the making also, which was really great. Um, we also participated in the National Make a Difference Day and Martin Luther King Day, and um, that was just a really good way to get the rest of the community like into it. And um, during, during our um, an annual meltdown pour, we had a pumpkin donation. Here's a picture of the pumpkins. Um, for the grandchildren that were um, suffering, like watching their grandparents with Alzheimer's. Um, so we got a bunch of pumpkin donations from a farm nearby, and we invited the grandchildren to come up and either carve the pumpkins or have metal be poured into them. So that was a really great experience. Also getting like different ages involved is also really important. Um, and yeah, that's my spiel. Hi, I'm Becca Fliss. Um, I'm also a recent graduate at Alfred University. And I really got into the Alzheimer's Glass and Iron Project, like working very close with Rose in the foundry and then hearing about all of the things that she was doing in the nursing home was very um, like moving to hear about. And so I have done a few um, cast iron sculptures. And the Alzheimer's Glass and Iron Project has really helped me develop my technical skills as an artist while still um, ex like while having this moving experience translating these paintings into these internal artworks. It's just something unrivaled by any other project that I've worked in before. Uh, it's a very um, like inspirational experience, just having this relationship with that. Um, and also, it's helped me develop um, like my iron casting skills specifically. I've been uh, at, mul at multiple tours that Rose has organized with the project, and um, being like the iron captain, and just really learning how to do uh, iron through this project has been a really great experience for me. So it has great ways or great way to go. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Michelle Crutchen. I'm going to be a senior this year at Alfred University, and I was first introduced to the Alzheimer's Glass and Iron Project in fall of 2013. This was also around the same time that I first started using um, cast iron as a process and as a material in my own work, so I really do associate working with the project as my introduction to working with iron. And so, um, this next year, as Rose and the girls will be over at SAW, I'm going to be using the project at Alfred University to keep keep going and keep in contact with them so that we have people still making the project at Alfred. I'm also planning on working more <coughs> to integrate the iron and glass side and getting students to collaborate with those mediums instead of having one or the other sculpture being produced. So we will be at Salem Artworks between August and October of this year, and we're really help, hoping to add some new elements into our project in several ways. We are going to start working with the elderly to sculpt, sculpt with foam, and then we'll be ramming those into sand and using acetone to eat away at the foam, so the elderly will actually be producing the pattern for the cast iron sculptures in the future, as well as working with enamel and glass. Also, Salem <coughs> Artworks, the tons of community is so important. So we really want to touch the entire community completely affected by Alzheimer's disease. We're doing this in several ways, closely working with the Alzheimer's Association. So we are organizing children's activities, and there is plans for an Alzheimer's class in Iron Children's Book. And we really want to keep going with giving back to these grandchildren and providing them with a positive memory associated with Alzheimer's. Another thing we're planning is we are working with the Alzheimer's Association to give caregiving daycare sessions. And while the elderly are at the daycare, we are hopefully going to be taking the caregivers and giving them a free flame working workshop. So they'll be taking home glass beads, but our main idea there is flame working is so consuming, so that takes your full focus. So it's really a way for the caregivers to relax, enjoy themselves while they know their family and loved ones are safe in the care of the Alzheimer's Association. <coughs> so that's what we're hoping to do as well as establish the project into an official not-for-profit. Yeah, that's, I wanted to, I, you know, <coughs> during the course of these talks, it seems like Alfred is, has some really interesting extensions in their core boundary, one being the environmental boundary. Mm -hmm. And then is is this is this an art as social engagement? This is a um, initiative or this is a community initiative. Um, so really to use art in a way that affects more than just artists and affects the whole community in a very therapeutic way. As well as I don't know if we touched upon this, we auction off the sculptures with proceeds going to the Alzheimer's Association. As well as at our fours, we're constantly accepting donations. So at our last four, we were able to raise a thousand dollars for the Alzheimer's Association in one day, which was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but my other, I had another question, and that that is that uh, working in gerontology, are you? And of course, I know there's art therapy, but are you aware of any other initiatives that are sculptural initiatives? Uh, art therapy and gerontology. There are a lot of sculptural initiatives. There are a lot of painting initiatives. And the art therapy realm really goes to the painting. <coughs> so I would like to do that sculpture initiative and get that rolling and really out there. But I haven't really come in contact with anything quite like this project. Um, do you find like the families <coughs> who's, I mean, for instance, the person with Alzheimer's and you make the sculpture, then the relatives of that person, do they want the, that sculpture that you made for themselves? I mean, is it hard to, I would imagine it would be hard to let that go and auction into some, someone else. I don't know, I mean, it just seems like, I would want, I wouldn't want to let it go. <laughs> well, just, we, um, do, do you know what I mean? Give the paintings back to the family. The so they have the original paintings back, paintings. and then we give them a documentation of the sculpture as mm -hmm. well. 
Mm, has the families ever purchased the sculptures? In some cases, yeah. yeah. It's interesting that other cases, <coughs> the artist's family yeah. will purchase the sculptures. Or the so, yeah. 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 So it's interesting to see it's where the sculptures go, as well as Alfred University um, trustees and faculty. Um, they are very supportive yeah. of the project as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But while we're at Santa Barbara, we will be hoping to do an online auction just so that we can reach out to people who aren't available to be at our live yeah. auctions yeah. have a chance. Yeah, especially if you're in a small community like Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think another interesting thing about this initiative is you see a lot of you know community-based artworks where you know children paint tiles or you know put their but what's What's fascinating to me about this one is that there's a give and take, and you, as artists, are making a sculptural interpretation from the drawing. So, kind of takes it a step further uh, in an interesting way, which would, I, I would guess, enrich your lives as well. Very much so. I think we can all agree that through the project, we've really gotten just a lot of emotional fulfillment. Yeah. And I definitely think like one of our another one of our like really main goals is just to educate people about Alzheimer's mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. And like I've become, you know, much more educated about it since doing the project. So it's it's been a learning experience on all ends, I think. I think a lot of people in America don't really understand what an epidemic Alzheimer's is going to become. It's one of the top ten leading diseases that are killing people in the nation. And it is the only one of the top ten diseases that we don't know the cause of. So it is a very scary thing, and our nation as a whole, I think we're all already here, is not prepared for it. Um, so raising awareness about that is, I think, very critical at this time. Do any of you have experience in your own personal families? That you have yeah. yeah. I do. That's how, um, that's like why this yeah. project is so, I guess, meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. and, um, my, I just watched my grandma, when I, this was when I was younger, but yeah. still it sticks with you, oh, you know, yeah, like you, when you yeah. witness it, um, she had Alzheimer's and dementia, yeah. and lived in a nursing home for two years, yeah. um, and it was just horrible, like watching my family deal with it, and yeah. also me dealing with it, like we would visit her every day, and it was, she would, she'd never remember my yeah. name, you know, like, yeah. and they don't know who you are. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah. She would think that um, her daughter was her sister, mm -hmm. and she would call me Tiffany. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. parts of it might be laughable, but like, it is really serious, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's why that's why it was so important to me to like mm -hmm. be involved with this and how like I got into it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, all on families, and it really does. does. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can do. Is yeah. Any further questions? Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Can you, you, you talk, can you explain a little bit about that book? The, um, about the children's book? Yeah. What do you, how do you envision that book and, and its effect in the whole thing? The effect. So right now there are two official books through the Alzheimer's Association um, that educate children about Alzheimer's. I am really, we are working with someone named Justin. Um, <coughs> where is Justin? Joe Bellamino. Who is a children's book author? So I'm kind of putting that in his hands, and he's allowed to spin it however he wants. It is going to be targeted towards younger children who have a hard time understanding what's going on with the disease. What I found difficult in the past is if you try to talk to children about Alzheimer's, it becomes very scary. Oh, is my grandfather going to forget me? So we're going to really try to put it in a very soft Oh, there's some cards in the